Well, let's deal with the aftermath, why don't we? I'm, I'm so bummed out. This should have been the year they stepped up. And adding talent, we went further last year with some of the younger talent. Skipping the line might not have worked out too well for us. We had great goaltending all season long, and unfortunately, they failed us. No other way to put it. They absolutely failed us. Defensively, I mean, Riley was solid, but outside of Riley and Nielsen on that top pairing, the second and third pairing simply weren't good enough. Again, Nielsen scored 18 goals in the regular season, didn't have a point in the series. And then for the forwards, Duchesne led the way, which is insane. Barzal, Matthews, and again, our strength, our secondary scoring. Timoshoff didn't do anything. Howden didn't do anything. Locke didn't do anything. Kachuk, Dubois. They just fell apart at the end. Braden Holpe has a lot to do with it. But that is... Very disappointing. The AHL teams going to a decisive game five against Binghamton, which they win. So the Marlies are moving on to round two to play the Utica Comets. So at least we had one team win around this year. 2-2 two, two with the first four games. That's it. Utica eliminates the Marlies in uh, six games. And what should have been, could have been, would have been a great year for us, basically top to bottom. Well, instead, absolutely nothing happens. Absolutely nothing. Goodness. Monty, it was a fun one. It was a fun one. A lot of episodes for it, too. It'll be being uploaded for a while. The Vancouver Canucks win the Stanley Cup in 2020. LOL. Not the Canadian team we were hoping to see win a cup. Vancouver beat Washington in five, so the Caps made it all the way to the final. But the Vancouver Canucks, Stanley Cup champions in 2020, as the Charlotte Checkers beat the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins in six to win the Calder Cup. As looking at the Canucks, they were led by Anders Lee, Marcus Granlin, Sven Perchke, Bo Horvat, Bartasak, among others. Goodness. And then in goal, Markstrom. 935 save percentage through 22 appearances. And the Canucks are champions means L.A. will win it next year. Patrick Kane wins the Art Ross Trophy. Hart winner, Semyon Barlamov. The Norris did go to Morgan Riley, which is great. Kane wins the Bing. The Calder went to Bartasak. Conn Smythe to Markstrom. Vezina to Varlamov. The Selkie to Jordan Stahl. Varlamov won to Ted Lindsay. And Patrick Kane wins the Rocket Richard. In the AHL... Sergei Tolchinsky was the leading point scorer. League MVP was a dude named Kovalev. Top goal scorer, Jack Kopaka. He was also the top rookie. Top defenseman, Ryan Pollock. Top goaltender, Kata Hat. MVP of the playoffs, Callum. I promise I actually have a neck booth. Jack Opaka. Hmm. The GOAT, Jack Opaka. Well, at the very least, we got to look at some progress reports here, which I imagine there was a decent amount. Plus two, plus three, plus three, plus three for Ian Scott. He's up to an 88. All right, and then what about the minors? Whoo! Plus 13 for Maurice Sauve, who was in the queue this season. Holy God. All right, Akulin went up by three, three, five for Dante Hanoon, five for Nolan Patrick, five for Philip Zadina. A couple more threes, quite a few threes and twos, actually. Wow. Plus three for Jake Kriske. So as many roster changes as we made this past season, we're now going to have to make more <laughs> because 
people just keep getting better. Oh, what a missed opportunity that was. The good news is we have a lot of draft picks. Let's see if we can make the most of it. But hello, Crash Andrews, by the way. Handsome, gorgeous, downright sexual. Anyway, memory castle. Continuing to put the money I didn't waste on NHL 24 to bad use. <laughs> Thank you for the three months, Castle. I appreciate it. And I wouldn't call it bad use. Supporting your local neighborhood franchise weirdos. Not a bad thing, is it? Ooh, we have the third overall pick. Not bad. We also have pick number 18, 21, 24. So quite a few picks indeed. Joe Pavelski also retired a year into his contract. Do the Flyers want to trade their pick? They do. I think it's fairly obvious we should look the trade up here. Seems like a pretty straightforward decision. I just don't know if I have anybody that I want to immediately get rid of. I mean, again, Sove is not quite going to be ready. Travis Hamannick's mad, but he's leaving anyway. Could be the right time to cash out on Philip Zadina. I don't know how much that'll help, but... I mean, he did have a plus five this year, though. So if we give up... God, what do we want to give up for this? You see, stay dangle close from something about keeping... I didn't. I didn't. I haven't gotten to watch the uh, Swedish Shell of ours. Unless that was from a podcast, in which case... Uh, I definitely haven't seen it. Oh, goodness. I don't know who to use here. Just makes sense to use the third pick. So the third overall pick. I mean, Sammy Nico is showing up as an 84. Honestly, Tyler Myers might be the guy to get rid of at this stage just because of the younger talent that we have. What if we try to dump Tyler Myers on the Philly for Phil Myers? <laughs> Third for one, Myers for Myers. Who says no? We'll also pick up some extra picks if we can. Let's remove a third. Let's remove a third. The third overall pick and Tyler Myers. For the first overall pick, their second pick next year, or the second round pick next year, and Phil Myers. Tyler Myers is gone. Uh, Frank, again, I just I didn't have the time and totally forgot, so that's why that's not happening. All right, so we look. Top five, no real guarantees of who's actually going to be good, so maybe this wasn't worth trading up. Maybe it wasn't. Although, again, getting rid of Tyler Myers did make sense. So, there's a goalie named Lindzen. So, there's a DFD. Spencer Glenn Cross, but he's 20. Lawrence Weller, 18-year-old sniper out of Canada. Magnus Rodin. Clint Murata. Or Victor Hansen. Apparently, it's somewhat accurate that Hanson's going to have good agility. Everything else might not be that good, though. High odds of five-star defense for Clint Murata, which is interesting. Honestly, I know he's 20 years old, but again, 20-year-old players could be really good at the time. Why do I have a hunch that Clint Murata could be insane? First overall pick, we traded a defenseman to get the pick. Let's select one to replace him. We're taking the American. There is one underage player. or not underage, but proper age, and that's Lawrence Weller, who's 18. But I'm going to go with my gut and go for Clint Murata. He is a medium elite. I'm intrigued to know what the overall is. Weller was also a medium elite, so we really couldn't have gone wrong off of potential that we know of. Those were the two that we were considering. And those were the proper two to consider. So this is a good thing we traded up. Otherwise, we would have gotten stuck with someone that we didn't quite want as badly as these two. It's just, does Murata's overall offset the fact he's two years older than Weller? 
That's the question. I don't think there's any other trade-ups I'm going to want to make. So we'll just sim to our next pick, which is 18th. It was a medium elite goalie, Fitzgerald, Lindzen, Grachev, a medium elite, Roche, holy shit. And Rodin was also a medium. Oh, fuck. I should have traded up with the Devils. I didn't realize that Rodin was still on the board. That's a mistake on my part. We could have gotten another medium elite. It is what it is. We might still. First round. Demore, Ruchin, Schneider, Giroux, or or Verbata. Right. Henry Orr, Philippe Giroux, Dan Schneider, 20 year old Ruchin, or Mark Demore. Ruchin's not going to have good skating. I can't say there's anybody here that I am like dying to draft with this pick. I don't trust the Dan Schneider. That's fair. That is fair. Brad Lawson's not looking that bad. His physical category is going to be terrible. David Pittis is going to have good defense. Patrick Verbata. One in doubt, go for an old check. We'll take Julian old check. Oh god, his skating is going to be so bad though. I was just thinking because at least he's a younger player. I have no idea who to select here. Really, it's not looking that good. A lot of overagers too. I'm going to go for Ruchin just because of that listed potential. Because we do have another pick coming up where I should be able to get Lawson anyway. Yeah, we have pick number 21, so we should be okay. So let's take Mr. Ruchin. Medium four. That's okay. Yeah, it's going to be about the same no matter what. And then we have Lawson to draft as well. Low six. All right, the quality of this draft may have just completely died. That is a little bit scary. Just a bit. If it was easier to trade down, I would. A high starter, DeRoche, there's cunning at a high nine. And then exacts. There's Graham. There's an exact top six, apparently. 18-year-old Ted Graham. Let's go for him. A little bit off the board, but at least he has a medium top six, so it's a good pick. Don't have another pick until the end of the second round. Almost the end of the second round. It is what it is. Uh, let's go for this guy, Lawrence Scott. Another overager. Low elite. Okay, that's good. Ooh, okay. Two out of three, not bad. So we got Lawrence Scott, which looks great. Ooh, who looks great? What about Vyacheslav Kennens? Low nine. Okay, not as hot. Still looking like this could be a really good draft for us. At least at the high end. Uh, oh, God. Let's go for Martindale. Low seventh. It's a tough draft to find steals in, man. What about Della Rivera, the high backup? It was actually a low backup. You hate to see it. And a seventh round pick. Let's go for either Chris Mayer or Benjamin Isbister. And we'll go for the Isbister. Why not? A low AHL starter. Okay, well, let's get the hell out of there. And hope that we did well with Murata. It means no worries. Or it means a complete swing and miss. If we could have had the other guy. So let's see. Def goalies first. So again, we have Scott, McBride's an RFA, Hart, Van Podelberg, Hellenius, and Party. None of the two neither of the two goalies. I was gonna say none, but there's only two. So neither of the two goalies that we just uh 
drafted we're going to do anything with. So goaltending will be pretty similar to last year. Defense, we got Reinhardt as an RFA. Valiev's an RFA. And Murata is an 80 overall out of the gates. Let's fucking go. That is a good first overall pick. The other guy might have been good too, but at least we know we did all right there. Uh, we'll hold on to Gustav Forsling as an RFA. We'll drop Travis Hamannick. He's mad anyway. Um, we'll hold on to Eric Chernock for the moment too. RFA. Joel Edmondson. You can go. Sove, we're not going to sign yet. Ruchin. Canadian, but he's 20. How'd that guy not get drafted till age 20. The wonders of how this draft worked. Let's see, we could drop Phil Myers. The rest of those guys suck. So our defense got the boost it needed in terms of prospects. Austin Matthews is an RFA. Gustav Nyquist is already mad, so we might look at moving him. Uh, we have the low elite Scott, who's a 70. It's not too bad. Okay. Left wing side, Barzal's an RFA. There's Gabriel, Line A. Gotta be honest. We can aim for people with higher potentials. So Jesse Gabriel will go, and at 22 years old, we'll move on from Patrick Line. Can aim for people with better potentials, as I said. Honestly, Mitch Marner. I know he's an 82, but... You know, at least he's an 82. Let's hold on to Mitch. The other guys were, what, 77, 76? Let's let go of Anthony Beauvillier. Uh, Graham. Canadian, so we're not going to sign him. All right, so we don't have too much to do. We do have $39 million in cap space. Technically, it'll be more once we move on from Nyquist, because he's pissed at me. Let's get those new dudes that are of age to be sent down to the AHL under contract. Chernak accepted the qualifying offer. It's not quite ideal. But free agency. I don't have anything to say. I'm just really happy. Jonathan Huberto looking for almost $12 million a season. What could go wrong indeed? That could be a very interesting contract. Goalie-wise, there's nobody to worry about in terms of signing. Defensively, there is this dude here, Carer. Would be a good little, good little pickup. Nobody else to worry about signing. There is like Justin Braun, Hamannick, but he's not going to want to come back here. Honestly, defensively, we really don't need anybody actually good. So in terms of forwards, I mean, it's Nick Backstrom, Huberto. Cry many. No great forward prospects to sign. There is that Garcia guy who I think we drafted and traded. So we are in another similar spot where we have to decide kind of who's staying and who's going with this roster. I think step one, though, is get Huberto under contract and then see what the offseason development happens to be. So we're going all in. Twelve and a half million for the next four years for 98 overall Jonathan Huberto. I don't think we'll risk it for Backstrom or for Bo Bennett because we do have other players who are already really good. Obviously, Backstrom, too, is really close to the age where he's going to start regressing. I mean, Bennett and Schwartz would be interesting, but they're not much better than who we already have, if at all. Huberto is. So can we land Jonathan Huberto? Carer signed. We tried to trade for him. We'll get him in free agency instead. Jonathan Huberto, welcome to Toronto. <sighs> well, 
We're going to have more big decisions to make about who stays and who goes on this roster. <laughs> Especially with the RFAs that we have, but I think that's uh, our business done in free agency. Get the best prospects. Get the top dog. Mitch Marner accepted the qualifying offer in coming 50-point season. Mm. Marner takes that qualifying offer. We'll see if we keep him. We might end up trading him. But time will tell. It will, it will. Austin Matthews accepts the qualifying offer. I was not expecting that from a player of his caliber, but fair enough. Griffin Reinhardt has accepted the qualifying offer. Okay. Saves me a couple of steps. I mean, probably getting a bunch of money regardless. So in terms of yield contracts, we have $13 million in cap space. With Valiev, Barzal, and McBride needing to be signed. McBride wants nothing. Valiev wants four. Barzal wants six. So, I mean, that basically works out. Seeing Reinhardt at an 87 makes me mad. What are you talking about? He's still that good to this day. Don't you besmirch Griffin Reinhardt. How dare you? There we go. Everybody accepted. So, let's kind of get a look. We do have to save an exit for the rolls to update and everything. But I do want to get a look. I forgot to look at the dude's overall that went second. It was Los Angeles that had that second pick? I don't remember. We can look right now, though. So I traded the third to Philly. Who had the second? Was it LA? I don't remember who had it. Ottawa. Okay, thank you. 63. We made the right choice. Maybe this guy will be an 80 by the time he's 20, but we made the right choice to get a guy who's good now. So I'll take that. So in goal... Remember when we were disappointed we didn't get a franchise level goaltender? From Ottawa, coincidentally, who's now an 80 overall at 20 years old. <laughs> Jesus. Ian Scott has made it to a 90. He is an elite goalie. McBride at an 85 is still listed as a backup. So that's pretty straightforward in terms of goaltending. Actually, he's a fucking 86. Defensively. I'm sure you can see the roles there. Um, Sammy Niku went from a depth defenseman to a top four in one season. Yeah, we're going to have some choices to make here. It honestly might result in Griffin Reinhardt getting traded. And then for the forwards... Oh, Christ. Oh, Christ, look at this. Look at this. It's just as bad as last year, if not worse. Okay. Well. Stubbs, what's going on, man? This isn't going to be easy. I mean, Murata and Carer as the uh, third pair is fine. I mean, we have two top four defensemen that have to go. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, two top four defensemen that have to go. Chris, good morning to you. Morgan Riley hit a 99. <laughs> Chris, I'm doing good, man. No complaints. Nikulin did drop from low elite to low four. I think the answer is obvious. I think it's Reinhardt and Valiev. Niku and Nielsen are going to stick around. We have the contract control on them. I think Griffin, Reinhardt, Renat, Valiev are the two that are leaving. Went to five overtimes in an initial game and loss. At that point, don't you just say, okay, I'm done with this game? So Reinhardt and Valiev have to go. Son of a bitch. This isn't going to be easy. How are we going to sort this out? I 
And then for the forwards. We pretty much know that Gustav Nyquist is on the way out, too, just because he's pissed. Um, although, maybe not. Maybe we keep him around. So Duchesne, Nyquist, and Matthews. If we don't play someone on the top line, they are going to get pissed. So, yeah, Nyquist is going to go. So, it'll be Duchesne, Matthews, and Huberto as our uh, top line this year, which is insane. Second line, more choices have to be made. Five people, only three spots. Need to fix something with a colleague and a server. Man. Fun. I'll trade you my uh, dishwasher and garage door issues. My God, dude, they're all like medium elites. So Dubois is gone. That's the easy one. PLD is on the way out. One other guy between Timishoff and Luke has to go. Timishoff is staying. You could argue Barzal at a low elite. So if we go Timishov, Kachuk, and Locke. And then get rid of PLD and Barzal. Why don't you stock up on so many prospects? That's just how these games work, man. Always bound to happen. Third liners between Howden and Krisky. We got to get rid of one. Krisky has the lowest potential. But both these two are 24 and probably not going to get that much better. But then again, they are medium elites. Krisky has the most value. I think maybe Jake Krisky gets flipped too. This is insane. So I think it's Howden, Bristle, and Virta. And then a fourth line is already decided. Grunstrom, Foster, and Rasmussen. So Reinhardt, Valia of Nyquist, PLD, Barcelona, Krisky. All have to get traded at least. But are there teams with prospects out there that we can even get that would make? I mean, Ottawa has Weller. That's one. Philly have Glenn Cross. 20 years old, 75. So there are prospects out there that we can get for sure. If we prioritize. Western teams first. Barzal has three more years, though. Shouldn't you keep him? There's an argument for all the players, but with Barzal, the thought is technically low elite. Medium elites are pretty strong in this, whereas low elites typically super strong, and it is, but he also didn't have a good season, really, and didn't have a good playoff performance either. So, um, cashing out on him now while well, he's at max value isn't the worst way to go. Defending Cup champion Canucks have Zekoff, but he's only a medium top six. Winnipeg have Chickering, but he's already developed. I'm going to do name Allmark. I do agree we could look for a big top two defenseman as well. Um, AJ, no, these are EA's rosters. But if we make a play for another top two defenseman, uh, that means Niku, Nielsen, or Nakulin get dealt, which is probably Sammy Niku. I got to be honest, we'd lose value on that because his potential and overall at that age, he should be worth more than he actually is. That's kind of the danger of that. There's Grachev on the Ducks. Okay, there are definitely prospects out there that we can go for. Is what I'm seeing here. Particularly on Western teams. So let's target this Grachev dude on the Ducks. A younger, medium elite player that we can build around. What's Riley's defensive awareness? 99! 
98 stick checking. I mean, he's a 99 overall. Like, going to be a lot of 99s or 95 pluses in there. All right. So we know that Griffin Reinhardt needs to go. He might be enough to pull off this trade on its own. Insane as that is, I'm going to safety net it really quickly. Looks like it's going to be Reinhardt for Grachev in a seventh. Looks like that's where we're going, and we'll deal Griffin Reinhardt for the eighth overall pick in the draft in Grachev. Nope, looks like it might be one for one, like I thought. I got to give up a little bit, actually. Fair enough. It'll be my seventh in the deal. Still not enough. Balls. Uh, I do have randos that I can tack on to this that we're never going to sign. Isbister, Della Rivera. There we go. So Reinhardt, Isbister, and Della Rivera for Grachev. That was a done deal with the Ducks. It counts as technically trading away Reinhardt because, again, qualifying offer. Which is very stupid. Also, it's still showing Grachev on the Ducks there. What? Why is it still showing Grachev on the Ducks? Uh... Hello? It's showing Reinhardt on the Ducks, but the prospect I traded for is also still on the Ducks. Do I exit without saving? Do I say do I save and then exit? <sighs> I guess we're not going to save and see how far back it takes me. Okay, I think we're okay, and needless to say, we will not be trading for Grachev anytime soon. Matter of fact, I'm just going to cut my losses and step away from this game for the rest of the night, because now I'm horrified.